So you've got multiple sclerosis and the doctors put you on a medicine to slow the disease down, a disease modifying therapy. How long are you supposed to take that therapy? When should you switch? Howdy. My name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. And in this video, I'm going to be answering that exact question. Don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I want to discuss when we should consider switching your disease modifying therapy. Under what situations might we say, this doesn't seem to be working out, should we consider other options? In my clinical MS practice, I would submit that there are six conditions under which we would make a switch or at least consider making a switch. Grab a pencil and paper and let's go through all six right now. Number one, if you have an attack on your disease-modifying therapy, we should discuss whether the drug is working for you or not. Think about it this way. If you are taking birth control pills and then you become pregnant, it didn't work. The intention of a birth control pill is to prevent an unplanned event. And if you have that unplanned event, well, golly gee, that wasn't your goal. Similarly, if you're taking a disease-modifying therapy for multiple sclerosis, one of the major goals is to prevent MS attacks. If you have what I call a breakthrough attack, an attack despite taking a medicine, that's not okay. Particularly with the modern, newer medicines, the anticipated annualized relapse rate, or the frequency of attacks, is 0.1, meaning statistically one attack every 10 years. So really, we should be shutting down attacks. If you're having attacks on your drug, that's not okay, and we should discuss potentially doing something different. Now, there is an important caveat. Drugs don't work the second you start taking them. Oftentimes, the disease-modifying therapies have a ramp-up period of upwards of six months. So if you start a drug and the next day, God forbid, you have an attack, that's too early to cut bait. Number two, new spots on the MRI while you're taking this medicine. If you have a clinical attack, God forbid, it's pretty darn clear that some bad things are going on. The reality is, if we see a new spot on a future MRI, despite being on a drug, it teaches me the exact same thing, that there is ongoing inflammatory brain damage despite taking a medicine intended to prevent that. So as we get annual MRIs of your brain, as we get MRIs of your spine every other year, we're looking to see if there's new structural damage new spots. And if we see those spots that have broken through the medicine, the medicine is not doing all the things we expect. Real quick before we go on, if you found some value in this video, do me a solid favor and give the video a thumbs up. Thank you. Number three is worsening neurological examination. When we bring you into the MS center and we run you through what I call the MS Olympics, we're looking at neurological functions. And if you are losing neurological functioning, if your exam is worsening despite being on a medicine, that's not okay. Now, I'm not telling you for a limited time only for $9.99 if you switch your medicine that we can make that not happen. What I'm saying is the goal of the medicine is to prevent progression of disability. And if we're seeing that on exam, that is an inflection point to ask the question if we're getting everything that we can get from this drug and if we should consider a different one that might provide better protection. Number four is poor tolerability. I'm fond of saying that I want you on the most effective disease modifying therapy that you're comfortable taking. And tolerability is a big part of that. If you're taking a medicine that's making you have diarrhea constantly, that's not gonna work out. If you're taking a medicine which is causing you to feel like you have the flu a couple days every single week, that's not gonna work out. My point is that we're asking you to do something for years, for decades. And if it's not tolerable, that's not gonna be a good long-term solution. There is no shame in that game telling your clinician, hey, this is not something that I can put up with taking. I need to consider another option that I can tolerate better. Number five is that the drug is no longer considered safe. And safety is something that can change over time. Just to give you an example, someone who starts off taking natalizumab, Tysabri, which is a highly effective drug, will have their JC virus antibody status checked in my clinic every three months. And if you started off Tysabri and it was a negative result and it becomes positive, and then that number climbs, the safety profile of that medicine Tysabri has changed from no risk of PML to a 
higher risk of PML. And in many patients, that's enough to say, wait, the risk benefit has changed and I need to consider a different drug. Another example would be one of the oral pills that could make your liver enzymes go up. And maybe after a couple months on being the drug, your liver enzymes spike, that's not good, and we need to take you off the drug. So safety is a major, major concern. My YouTube analytics says that half of you watching this video right now have subscribed to the channel. So to that half, thanks guys. For those of you that have not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. It's completely free and it teaches the YouTube algorithm that you like this content and helps push it out so more families impacted by MS can benefit. Thanks. Number six is that a new drug has been invented which is categorically better. Now, back in the ancient days of yesteryear, we used to say, listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you're putting up with your drug, let's just keep on doing it. And increasingly, I think that's a bunch of hogwash. The reason I say that is there are drugs today that can do things that we couldn't do back in the ancient days. For example, many of the first line shots that we used to give people for MS are very bad at slowing disease progression. They don't do it very well. Comparatively, when you look at the new monoclonal antibodies, they are much, much better at slowing disability progression. I want that for my patients. Similarly, many of the early drugs are not remarkable at slowing brain volume loss, something very important in MS, whereas the newer drugs can. So, if you're on a therapy and something new is developed which can offer you more, that's also a point in time that we can consider an upgrade. It's worthwhile talking about when I would not stop a disease-modifying therapy. I would not stop a disease-modifying therapy because you happen to celebrate a particular birthday. There are MS neurologists that are downright ageist, and they've decided that if you achieve a birthday of, say, 55 or 60 or 65, well, then, honey, you don't need to take your medicine anymore. And that's completely nonsense. As long as you have a nervous system, with neurological features that you're fond of, like seeing or smelling or having an orgasm or moving your fingers or any of these neurological features, I want to help you preserve that neurologic reserve. And if you have an immune system which would like to beat up on your nervous system, I want to do something to prevent that. It's true that people with MS who are a bit older in age are less likely statistically to have an attack. They're also less likely to recover. Moreover, People with MS who are a bit older in age have a higher likelihood of having progression of disability. And I'd like to remind you that the medicines for MS, particularly the newer medicines, do a decent job of slowing that down. So I would not stop the drug just because you reached a certain age. If you'd like to up your game and learn more about MS, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.